Hello, my name is Billy Sample. I am a student in ME304, and today I will be solving a strain rosette problem with a Morse circle at the end. So I have everything listed that is very important to us to solve to solve this uh, AISI302 stainless steel, which gives us these values over here, the modulus of elasticity, which is E is equal to 2.756 times 10 to the 7 PSI. Also the modulus of rigidity, G, so you go to 1.088 times 10 to the 7 psi and Poisson's ratio, which is equal to 0.28. Then I have the all the, the different strain the gauge values uh, listed here, one, two, and three. And then I also have their theta values. Um, theta one is negative 75 degrees, theta two is zero degrees, and theta three is 75 degrees. And then here I have all the Important equations listed below. Sorry, I have a th sore throat. That's kind of why I, I sound this way. <laughs> um, but I have the important, uh, I have all like the e, how to calculate E1, E2, E3, and then also uh, the Hooke's Law in order to find sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. So let's get started. So we'll start with uh, equation one, which will give us E1. So the I have my I have notes over here too with everything calculated so I don't have to uh, take too much time uh, using my calculator to to solve the problem. So e one is equal to e x cosine squared theta one plus e y sine squared theta one plus gamma x y cosine theta 1 sine theta 1 so plug in or plug in the your 425 times 10 to negative 6 that's your uh, first gauge value which is equal to e of x uh, cosine squared uh, we use negative sorry negative 75 degrees for uh, for this one for theta 1 plus e y sine squared negative 75 degrees plus uh, gamma xy cosine 75 degrees sine 70 negative negative 75 degrees um so uh when i calculate that it gives us all right i'll write it here uh 425 times 10 negative 6 equal to and then uh We'll do it like decimal value 0 0.067 EX plus 0 0.933 EY. And I do it like this just so that I will be able, for later on, it'll be easy to calculate um, EY and gamma XY. Okay. Oh, let me just label that as uh, one so we know where we're at. So the second one, uh, this one will be nice and easy to simplify because it'll be... Uh, we plug in zero, and when you do a sine, uh, sine of zero, that just gives you zero. So, so those will cancel out. It'll be zero, and then cosine of zero is just one. So e to the x would just be equal to e two, which e two. Sorry, E2 is equal to 200 times uh, 10 to negative 6 inch per inch. So we have that, and then that'll make it very easy for um for when we do, like, uh, the substitution for... Uh, oh, shoot. Sorry, <laughs> I dropped my pencil. So I'll just plug it. We know E3, E3... Um, so it's just all like the same equation. It's just for all the different uh, different gauge values. So it is equal to, and then I already had it uh, calculated out. Um, but like the seventy five uh, degrees, be the same for when it's negative seventy five. So point zero six e x plus zero point nine three three e y plus zero point two five gamma x y. So now uh, we use equations one and three. To find, uh, oops, sorry, those are my notes. To, sorry, we use it to find uh, E of Y and gamma XY. 
So it's just basically like your your substitution method. Um, you just plug in uh, your EF2. You will plug that in to like oh into the E of X in equation one and equation three. Um, and then you will. And then you see here, the point twenty five is positive, and then in uh, equation one, it's negative. So these ones will cancel. Cancel. So you will be solving for e of y, and then I had already, like I said, I had already solved for it. Um, so I know e of y will be equal to after you add everything together, it will be equal to. 5.2626 times 10 to the negative 5 inch per inch. Okay, so we have our E of Y of I, which is important, and then we also have our E of X, or, oops, I wrote E of 2. I have to write E of X, that's what it's equal to. And then you plug that all uh, back in. You plug it into like one of the equations and then that'll give you gamma x y which i had already solved for as well so yeah I, I plugged it into equation three so so e of x would go into here e of y would go into the right here times point nine three three and then you just solve for gamma x y which will give you 1.45 times 10 to the negative three and this is in this one is in radians and not inch per inch like the other ones so now we can move on and we can use hook's law to find uh, all the different stresses so, so we start with sigma x which the hook's law equation is equal to big e over one minus Poisson's ratio squared plus or times e to the x plus Poisson's ratio times e to the y and as uh, the values I had on the first page it is 2.756 times 10 to the 7 over 1 minus 0.28 Remember, the, only the Poisson's ratio is squared, and you multiply it by e to the x, which we determined as 200 times 10 to the negative 6 plus Poisson's ratio. Ooh, sorry, it's a little hard to write. Uh, right to 8 times 5.2626 times 10 to the negative 5. And then when you solve for that, We'll, we'll get it. I'll, I'll just put it in KSI. I'll give it to you in PSI, but if you divide by a thousand, that'll give it to you in KSI. So that gives you 6.42155 KSI. I'll round at the end, but I want to leave values at the, at the decimal just so I can sign for it. will give me a more like accurate value. And then now we can move on to sigma Y, which gives you... It's basically the same thing. The only thing that's switched is the E of Y and E of X. So Poisson's E of X. So basically the same thing, 2.756 times 10 to the seven over one minus 0.28 squared. Uh, and then multiplied by 5.2626 times oops, times 10 to the negative 5 plus 0 0.28 Poisson's ratio by 200 times 10 to the negative 6 and then that'll give you 3 oops sorry uh, 3.2484 KSI and then the final thing that you have to solve for is tau xy, which is just the modulus of rigidity times uh, gamma xy, which is 1.088 times 10 to the second uh, psi times 
four five times ten to the negative three. This is the last. This is the other thing that we had just solved for, um, and that will give it to you. And I'll give you one point five seven seven six ksi. So now that we have these values, um, we can um, we are able to use them to uh, solve the more circle, which will be the final part of the problem. So let me just draw a graph real quick. And then I will put about to like eight, eight values on my graph to leave plenty of room. And then, okay, so the first value that we will plot is, I believe that is 6.4215, which will be about right here, halfway between six and seven. And then our tau xy it will be determined like where we place on the y-axis so uh this first part this one over here will be negative so we go down to about one and a half which is right here and then so i'll label that that way we uh now that one eight and then our other value is 3.25 so right here and then this one, the Y will be positive. So 3.25, 1.58. And then, so uh, I don't have a ruler, so I will just draw this line as best I can. And now, so we have, the next value we have to determine is the one where the line intersects the X axis. So we do that just by simply find the average of sigma. So it'll just be uh, sigma x plus sigma y all divided over 2, which will give us uh, 4.8350. So oh, I must have, oh, I think I might have not drawn that line correctly because it should get, it should be not past the 5, it should be about like right here just a little bit before the five so i will label that as 4.8 and then so now we have to use uh pythagoras theory in order to find the radius so we simply find that by we just gotta subtract from where the, the line meets the the x-axis and subtract it from the x value that gives us uh this dot right here so that will just be uh that's the change of x it will be 4.8 uh 350 minus uh three three point two four eight four which will give us one point five eight six five eight and then what we do from here is oh and then so that gives us this part right here and then we already have the part that leads up to the y and so then using pythagoras theorem we solve for the radius by the square root of the adjacent and like opposite value of the these two lines right here so 1.58658 square that and then add uh one oh oops i had Oh, uh, it's, uh, oops, 1.5, I'm sorry, the numbers just closed and it just tripped me up, but that will give us 2.2374, so then that's the line, this line right here, the hypotenuse, and then see, well, this will be the max uh, value of tau, tau max, which is equal to... 2.2374 and then I know we're not solving for it but tau min would just be right here just be the opposite it would just be negative so tau max 2.24 just to simply round it off and then so to solve to complete the more circle we have to solve for sigma 1 which is just this value right here where it meets the x-axis plus the radius which will go about to like right here which so 4.8350 plus 2.2374 
that gives us using my notes uh 7.0724 ksi so that's roughly right here at the seven mark. Oops, that is sigma one. And then we simply solve for uh, sigma two, just by doing the opposite. It's just 4.8350 minus 2.2374, which will give us 2.5976 KSI which is right around in between here, the two and the three, sigma two. So that'll allow us to draw more circle. Uh, let's see, I wanna connect this as best as I can. I'm not the best artist. It looks kind of like a like a walnut, but there it is. There's more circle, and then these are my values: tau max, sigma one, sigma two. And that is how you solve the strain rosette problem, and also more circle with it as well.